Beyond Technical, Competitive Gaming. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to another episode of Beyond Technical. Today we're going to be checking out a piece of software that I think is really, really cool and definitely related to the Street Fighter community, and it's going to be an awesome, awesome thing for people to help, or to help people learn how to use uh, Street Fighter and play the game and to give them a really nice tool for practicing. So today we're talking about something called Framed Trap, or Frame Trapped, sorry, Frame Trapped. Frame Trapped is a piece of software um, in development by a very, very small team of, I believe, mostly two people. Um, and they've been in contact with me and they wanted me to, I guess, kind of beta test their software and give them a bit of uh, feedback and potentially, I guess, give a video to, I guess, show off their software a little more and give it more exposure. So that's what we're doing today. They've been in contact with me. There's absolutely no monetization or financial incentive for me at this point in time at all. Uh, the only thing I've done personally is I've had contact with the developer. Um, I've had I've been spoken to Tom quite a few times now. And I said, hey, this is actually a really cool piece of software and I want to show it off. And he said, great, go ahead. And that's basically just for pure transparency between the two of us, that's what we're up to. So. Uh, yeah, I'm going to be basically ploying or giving a bit of a, an ad or ploy for Frame Trap today because I think it's really cool and I think you guys are going to get, like it and get a lot of really, uh, really good use out of it. So without further ado, let's jump on over and check it out. All right, so first things first with Frame Trap, you're going to notice um, there's basically two focus windows. This is running a very live, very real version of Street Fighter. You can use your fight stick, you can use whatever controller you want, and you can play Street Fighter in this window no problem at all. It automatically grabs the game from Steam for you, so it's actually really, really easy to set up and run. It's really not that complicated. All right, so first things first, let's click into the window and I'll show you guys. I can just walk around and do whatever I want. I can shoot soul sparks. I can... Oops, uh, do some combos, and you know, game's pretty easy. So it works exactly like, you know, normal Street Fighter. There really is no difference, there's no frame delay, nothing along those lines. One of the things I think is really, really cool in this software is that it has this combo builder down to the side here. This is basically an assist tool. You can use it to build, add frames, take away frames, whatever you want to do to practice and check out these timing specific portions of the game. Now, Street Fighter is a game all about one frame lengths and things like that. So this is a really cool thing to get to help you learn. So for example, if we want to do, I've already pre-programmed this one for Rose. If we want to do her forward fireball, I can click play here and every single time it's going to input the perfect inputs and give me a soul spark. Um, it's just that easy. Now let's say that after that we wanted to do something else. So I'll show you how to input this and create your own custom combos. So you click on this little button over here to add frames or inputs uh, and you click on this one to remove them. If you want to add up the frames you move this slider along. So let's say we're going to wait for 40 frames after we shoot a soul spark and then how about we crouching a uh, heavy kick. What do, you, what do you say? Let's give that a shot. So we should soul spark and then our crouching heavy kick came in, but it wasn't long enough. So let's say, okay, well, clearly we didn't have enough frames. How about 60 frames? And hit play again. Ooh, there, now it comes out. So you see, you can see that 40 is too fast and 60 is works, but it is potentially too slow. And it gives you the chance to kind of play with the software and tweak and check every individual frame so you can figure out exactly how you want it to work or make your own combos or figure out the best way to punish X move. It's a really, really amazing tool to help you learn Street Fighter at your pace for whatever you want to pick up and learn. I think it's really, really cool to help kind of analyze and, and understand the game in a deeper way. Now, it's not just a combo builder. Those exist already and they're out there. But one thing this software does that's pretty cool is it actually renders hitboxes in real time in the game. So again, this is me controlling right now and I can see all of the hitboxes following whatever I decide to do. If I jump, I crouch, I slide, they all follow me. The active hitboxes show up as well. So you can see when Rose does a kick, that red box is the hitbox. So if I swing at Dan and I, I hit that yellow portion of him on the inside there, boom, that red part hits him, we're gonna connect with an attack. Uh, if it doesn't hit him and it reaches right on the outside here, no dice, it's not hitting the hitbox. All right, so this is pretty cool because it's gonna give you a really good understanding of how all the hitboxes work and how the moves come out. So you can see when Rose does her slide, you can watch her yellow hitbox get really low. The red hitbox is the part where the slide's gonna hit and hurt the other players. So if they're jumping in on you, you're gonna get maybe underneath their attacks and counter them if you hit them low. Um, or how about her forward heavy kick? You can see how low her hitbox gets. So they go for a high attack and they're not gonna trade with me. They're probably gonna whiff high and I'm gonna hit them. 
So it's just really, really cool to understand all this. Uh, one of the hitboxes, just before we move on to the anything else, so basically the yellow boxes are the hitboxes that are your hurt box. So if any red or orange, orange is projectiles, if those hit the yellow part, you get hit. The green part is actually your grab box. Your grab box is bigger than your hitbox. So when you grab on rows, you see it does this blue square. So if I grab and it's right outside of that range, I don't grab or throw down. But if I just shuffle forward a little bit, boom, now that blue box connects with the green box and that's in his grab range. This really big, long, um, I guess, penis looking line sort of thing from Dan is actually the block line. So when I swing like this, he he's holding back, he's gonna go into a block animation. If I do it from all the way over here, he's not going to go into a block animation. So that's basically how you read and understand these boxes and that's what they do. There's a little more complexity to it, but we're not gonna jump into that because as usual, Beyond Technical is about keeping things simple enough to understand and just we're, today we're showing off beta software. So if anything blows up or goes wrong, don't worry about it too much. That's a little bit expected until software is finally fully developed. So there's always gonna be some bugs and kinks and things to work out. So you're able to do that and you can actually click on and off the individual boxes, but I will tell you that my personal copy of the software is actually crashing when I do that. Um, although I pass that on to the developers and they assure me that they're gonna be fixing that one real soon. So uh, yeah, it still has a little bit of testing to go through, but rest assured that's gonna pop up. Uh, I'll tell you guys at the end of the video how to follow that if you're interested in checking this out yourself and potentially giving it a shot when it finally comes out. So the other cool thing the software can do is I can go over to the Street Fighter library. So you can use the Combo Trainer to practice in real time and you can use the Street Fighter library to learn about whatever you might need to know. So we can actually take this library which has all of these moves and put into it and you can check out all the statistics you might want. So for example, um, close jab on Ryu is 30 damage. It has three startup, it has three active frames and six frames of recovery. So you can use this to potentially build your own combos if you wanna do all the math. But let's be honest, most players, they don't wanna do that much math. So linkable moves, it says coming soon on here, but my version actually has this up and running. Linkable moves show you what you can and cannot do beyond that ability. So let's say we wanna do a close jab, or no, sorry, let's do his, his standard combo, crouching jab, and then we follow that up with a crouching jab, right? We all know that Ryu can link two jabs together. Cool, now what can we do? So. Crouching jab links into crouching jab. What else can we do? So is it cancelable and is it linkable? So we have two windows showing off basically the different ways you can actually change from one move to the next. You can either do a cancel or a link. Uh, if you don't understand that, jump back to some of the older Beyond Technical videos where I've explained that multiple times. So crouching jab, close jab. Let's do another crouching jab here. So crouching jab, crouching jab. And then what's a very typical Ryu combo? Crouching jab, crouching jab crouching strong and then you can finish that with a um i'm not sure let's say a medium shinku hudoken and then there we go we have no more moves because that is the end of our combo that's what we are capable of doing so you can use this basically to show what you can link together and figure out how to build your own combo so this is a bit of a combo builder um, you can jump through you know, all the different characters with their different abilities and then you can jump from the library over to the combo trainer and then give it a shot in real time so I think that's a really, really cool feature. So this is an awesome way to practice when you're really feeling down or you're a little frustrated with the ladder, you can jump on over to Frame Trapped and give it a shot. So one last thing I wanna show you guys before we move on with this video and finish it up is let's go to the character change actually and just show you I think one of the more interesting characters for hitboxes because those two are pretty typical. So how about we take two characters with a lot of contrast? How about Hugo? And let's say, um, yeah, why not Alina? All right, so everybody knows, or hopefully you know by now, that Elena has a very, very low hitbox when she crouches, and Hugo has a very gigantic hitbox. So I understand that Hugo has a big hitbox, but I don't know if you've ever actually seen it before. So his hitbox, his head actually touches the bottom of the health bars, and his grab box actually touches the top of the health bars. So his head actually pokes above those health bars. Um, his her box is gigantic. So you can see Elena has really wide legs, which makes her easier to hit low, but she has actually a very thin torso. So her hitbox and like on the high part is actually very, very small. Uh, her grab box, however, shifts around a lot. You can see as she dances around, it actually does the game updates live and moves her hitbox around. So I think that's kind of cool. Boom, there, hit. Now, if we just, mm -hmm, training options, human.
There we go. So you can see on Elena, when she crouches down, just how low her hitbox gets. Hugo's hitbox is about twice as high on crouch. So you can see why so many moves whiff over top of her, right? So that red part is not gonna necessarily hit her when she's crouching. Oops, I'm hitting the wrong, there we go. I'm looking for jabs. <laughs> Trying to play two characters at once here. So yeah, that jab is actually going above her yellow box. Now as she shifts around, sometimes her head was coming up high enough to get hit by that, but most of the time, no, she's totally safe to his standing jab. So just for an example, that gives you a kind of a look at the characters, and you can see that her crouching hitbox actually takes her legs in, so they're not so wide anymore. Just kind of a cool example of what this kind of software can do, how you can use it to learn things, and how you can kind of check out what you want to know. You can learn anything you want. You can basically force one character to do a shoryuken and the other character can block and then punish at this specific frame with an ultra and you can watch everything come out very, very frame specific. And this helps you to learn um, very, very specifically. Oh, there's a bug flying around my head here. Very specifically, uh, like how you're going to, what your best punish is going to be and you can just see it all in real time and watch the hitboxes and watch everything connect and then use the the combo trainer to figure it out. Now the combo trainer does two other things that I didn't really show off that I think are kind of worth mentioning is you can add a noise tick to each individual input. So basically if every time you hit the punch button you want it to go tick tick tick, it's kind of like a metronome. It helps train your brain the timing for your combos. So you can pre-program that in and then do the combos with the combo trainer and it will train your brain for when to hit the buttons. I think that's kind of cool. It's definitely a good feature. Uh, the other thing it can do is you can like resize and stretch and move everything around however you want. And the combo trainer can also uh, collapse in on the other side and let you control player two. So if you want to set it to human, you can actually have two players fully inputted combos. So if you really, really wanted to spend a long time pre-programming combos, you could actually build like the perfect matchup and have them fight each other all automatically. Uh, so that's frame trapped. That's uh, how it works. That's what it does. I think it's kind of cool. I think it's definitely worth a bit of a mention and I was more than happy to, I guess, display it on the Beyond Technical channel. So for those of you interested, we'll have some stuff pop up here, but um, you can follow frame trapped on Twitter or via their website. On Twitter, they are twitter.com slash frame trapped or frame trapped.com. Uh, I will also be posting links down below if you would rather just click on it because you're lazy and we're on the internet and who am I kidding? Everybody wants to just click on a link. So if you're curious to checking that out, by all means. The other thing I will personally do is whenever it comes out, I rest assured as long as I am uh, informed and aware and I believe I will be, I will post it up on my Facebook and Twitter and all that stuff too. So if you're following Beyond Technical, uh, you will definitely be uh, informed when everything comes out. So as I said before, currently the um, there is no set release date, unfortunately, so we're not sure exactly when Frame Trap is going to be coming out. And I have spoken to the developers personally, and they've basically stated that they're not entirely sure how they're going to release their software. It may be monetized through uh, advertisements and delivered for free. It may be a small fee to purchase the software. They're not entirely sure how they're going to handle that yet. So we're going to have to see what happens with that as it comes out. But that's the current status of Frame Trap. So be sure to check that out, follow along, and uh, see when that finally comes out because it's really fun to play around with and really cool. Uh, I've had a few crashes so far, so there have definitely been some issues with the software. Uh, although, again, I'm running a beta build on my computer, so I expect nothing less than a little bit of problem, or a, a few problems. So. That's the current status, that's frame trapped. I hope you guys think it's as cool as I do. Um, I was just, yeah, really uh, excited when I started playing around with it. It works really, really well, and it's very, very easy and uh, simple to run, so. No worries, even if you're not that savvy, it's very simple to set up and very simple to use. It pulls your Street Fighter directly through Steam, so you are actually playing a live, real version of Street Fighter. Um, so potentially there are issues that could arise from using this for cheating purposes but uh, I'm pretty sure they're gonna be trying to find ways to prevent that, or they've already added in a small delay, so you can't actually use like a, a hotkey to automatically ultra or anything like that, for example. So um, the developers are working to, I guess, circumvent using their software being used for anything other than training purposes. So that's Frame Trapped. Thanks for watching Beyond Technical. I will see you guys next week with uh, more whatever I come up with because it's a mystery to me right now. Thanks for watching. Again, I'm Matt, aka Skiar Rathbun. You can follow the stuff spinning around. And uh, if you're interested in any more gaming review or gaming content that's not specifically Street Fighter related, um, you can check me out also over at the GOM EXP channel. Uh, that's my job. I make video game reviews for a living. And so I'm starting to post those there. Uh, I one a week so far, so we'll see how that progresses. Thank you guys. Uh, let me know if you have any questions or comments in uh, the comments below, and I'm sure the Frame Trap developers will also be replying if uh, you would like to post something there to contact them. All right, I'll see you guys next time. Thank you very much for watching. This is Beyond Technical. I'm Matt. See you around.